to the left. I figured then. <laughs> where should I sit? Here, closer. Closer. I don't want to get too close because, Why? well, come you on, Jerry, too? move closer. <laughs> no, but aren't you married? No. No. You're not married. And you're not married either. <laughs> and you canceled dinner Listen, on me last night, you devil. The way it is, uh -oh. no, I didn't. I didn't care. You were in New York working very hard, and you didn't come home till late. And we people from California, we go to bed at 8 or 9 o'clock so we can watch our little television shows. You know, I'll bet people wonder, though, Jerry, when you're not involved in doing a show like Happy Days, when you're not directing or you're not acting a show, how do you spend your time? Waiting for Eileen for dinner or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good night. I'll see you. <laughs> no, sit down, Jerry. <sighs> you spend a lot of time in the garden. I know that for a fact, don't you? I was looking at a girl with straight hair. With straight hair. And I like certain types. We'll, we'll introduce I, you to I the spend race. A lot of, I spend a lot of time in what? You spend a lot of time in the garden. Yeah, I have a, a rose, that sounds so boring, you know. <laughs> I have a rose garden, but I'm very proud of it. I have 57 rose bushes, isn't that nice? Growing all over California, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. I have a beautiful home up on top of a hill that doesn't slide the way everybody thinks. Yet. Yeah, no, that's right. And, uh, but you know, I was swimming in the Pacific Ocean uh, Saturday when I talked to you. Yes. I had a phone underwater. By the way, hello, Eileen. <laughs> I, gardens. I didn't get killed. But let's back up because yeah. yesterday, the, okay. our very uh, first surprise for Robert Stack, in case you didn't watch the show, was Jerry. For a good reason. Jerry played Martin Flaherty in the original yeah. um, Untouchables. He played Bob's sidekick. And Bob actually has great affection for Jerry, which we certainly I found out. I called you after you left the Untouchables when you were then moved yeah. to another series. Yeah. And in that series, you worked with four mm -hmm. absolutely fabulous actors, five of them actually. And when you work with Dick Van Dyke, it's such a pleasure because Dick Van Dyke is such a gentleman and he'll let you ad lib anything you want. For instance, in, in that show, it came to me. In the first scene, we came in the living room with Mary Tyler Moore and my wife, Millie was Ann Morgan Gilbert and their premise their attitude was you should never buy a boat together because you'll fight you'll hate each other you see and and, I, and we said we're gonna be great together And I said I was an ensign in the Navy so <laughs> I'll be the captain and you'll be the first mate And he said right I don't know anything about it whatever you say Jerry you'll teach me and I had my ensign hat that you saw it was all dry then there it was all wet because we were <laughs> almost drowned in the Long Island Sound and so we went to the door and it wasn't even in the script but I was playing my attitude so strong so very strongly about being the captain and he said we're gonna have a great time together and he hugged me and I said we sure are but remember don't ever touch me on the boat <laughs> and and the untouchables with a wonderful guy like Bob Stack who was such a great leading man and also so unselfish to give actors like myself more to do see good actors like Bob and Dick Van Dyke and now that I'm a director I can say this we're never afraid of supporting actors like me to say, you take that speech, you take it. Richard Denning did that and Michael Shane. I don't want it, I can't handle it. And then I would do it coming out of the actor's studio in New York and all the struggling that I did, whereas some of them, they kind of hit fast and they didn't like those kind of speeches and they had very good taste. Bob Stack, as he said yesterday, he didn't really, uh, he didn't really work at being an actor. He was kind of a playboy around Southern California, and then he got it, yeah. and he really liked it, and he loved people like Frank Nitti, Bruce Gordon, mm. and Jerry Paris, and all those guys from New York that came out to play gangsters. He always wanted, John Forsyth always told me that. John's a good friend of mine, you know, in Dynasty. Sure. And you know, John's very handsome now with the white hair. Oh, is well, he ever? We play tennis together for like 20 years. We have about six of us. He always wanted to play characters. But he was always a leading man. Yeah, it's you know? amazing how you'd never think that someone who's had longevity and succeeded would ever want something else other than what they have. But I guess no. the grass is always greener. Isn't it's it? always greener. You're right, Eileen. I think all of us. Well, maybe you want something else. Maybe Tim does. I'm sure the camera in there would like to get out from behind that camera. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Uh, but do you have to be? Is there? Is uh, what goes on inside the head of Jerry Paris when you are creating? Are you just more visual than most to be able to see the way something should set up? When I do a motion picture, I do a great deal of homework. If I have to shoot in Texas and Rome, Italy, I make plans. I go over there. Uh, this shot goes here, this here, this page here should be here. We come off that cathedral. But when you do comedy every week, you try to do the kind of uh, suddenness, I call it, the creativeness from the actor and that the camera people should sit down and watch then they can understand what we're doing. Not come in the last second and just say, I want a close up here and a two shot here yeah. and a three here. But you know, actors in. make fun too. They're like children playing at school. You know, mm -hmm. we're all in the sandbox. And if you're not unhappy and throw sand at each other, you can have a good time, <laughs> I say. And then the director can jump in in the middle of a scene while we're rehearsing with, 
Henry Winkler and Ronnie Howard and God, Mary, Marion Ross, God love her. What a great lady. How inventive. And then I can jump in right in the scene and say, Eileen, listen, I got a better idea. If you put, if you, you, and t if you just did this, yeah. now say the line that way to each other and then look away, maybe it'll work. And they do it and we get a laugh. Can I have a line? That. What's the line? The line I is, I'm, line. I'm crazy about you and then you turn to me like you're not. I'm crazy about you. But you did it too fast. <laughs> you have to do it this oh, way. I'm crazy about you. Okay. Let me. I'm, I'm crazy, crazy about you. I think you it's both my turn line. Away. No, it's oh, cute. we can say what it you together. Did. All right, what you, you did was cute. I'm, I'm crazy, crazy about, about you. you. Both turn away. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what the oh, that was good. And you know what? Jerry good. wore his red sweater. I have to tell you, this has been his trademark. And I said, Jerry. Why? Why? It, what, tell me what you, you said. Because you wore a red dress. No, with white. no. But you, you said because then you. Oh well, I didn't. Yeah, because I didn't. I didn't think about that. I'll, I'll do it very quick. I'm talking too fast. No, you're not. Mm. I think that uh, when I came on the set to direct my first Dick Van Dyke show, I threw up the night before. <laughs> I, did. I, I did. Carl Reiner said, "You're going to direct tomorrow." We start direct. I threw up all night. Well, wouldn't you? I did. Yeah. 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 That I'm was sure. my way. And and then I came and I was thinner. <laughs> and then I started directing and it was pretty good. And then the night of the show, um, I didn't wear a red sweater. And there's a mistake. And I direct on the floor. Some direct up in a booth, you know. I direct on the floor so I can be close to my actors. I always have. I don't believe it in it up there looking at monitors because that isn't real. And I said something, that's not so good. And Dick Van Dyke, who's, Jerry, Jerry, where are you? Jerry, Jerry. And so I put on a red sweater. It's <laughs> my isn't she beautiful? This is my audience. Jerry Isn't found she beautiful? Yeah. A five month old little oh. I told you I could date in Boston. <laughs> Hi, honey. Look at you. Here's this this little mother. girl's mother actually had a question before the show. I said, Are there any questions? And the mother said, Yeah, if she starts to cry, where's the door? Oh, <laughs> you're not going to cry, are you? She's been great. You, you, you like it. Silly girl. Like She's wearing earrings already. She oh, She'll be very expensive when we go together. We want to. Uh, we want we want to uh, uh, talk for one second should about I get, I get two, rid of the kid? two other characters. I get rid of I'll hold it. You know this is not a real baby. This is just a rubber. <laughs> no, it's a rubber doll, a mechanical. Everything was computerized. She's so there's someone funny. there's someone uh, ready to say Hi, something baby. to you who you worked with for years okay. on the Dick Van Dyke Show. Oh, you did it Are you there, Maury Amsterdam? Maury. Well, good morning. Good morning, Hi, Maury. Maury. I don't know what I'm saying. Good morning for it's still last night out here. <laughs> Maury! I, I haven't been up this early in years. The first time I ever heard of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> He's really there, Jerry. Talk. Yeah, are you, are you in California at the, your beautiful home? Yeah, I'm in California, and I just want to tell you something. I haven't been up this early in years. <laughs> I want to welcome you to Boston. That's why I feel safe, because I'm out here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's later here. We're getting ready for lunch. You want to get on a plane quick, and I'll take you to lunch. A beautiful Quincy Market. <laughs> Listen, Cy, if you're taking me to lunch, somebody else must be picking up the tab. <laughs> <laughs> Maury! Maury, memories. What's the one that sticks out in your mind the most during those years you worked together? Well, I don't know. I, I just wanted to find out with Jerry if, if he'd run into Paul Revere since he's been there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have. So. When last time I was in Boston, I went to his house. He wasn't there, but I saw the bed he slept in. The way it sacks in the middle, I think his horse slept with him. <laughs> you know the old saying, Jerry, a friend in need is a pest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. There is, there is somebody else that is on the phone for you that yeah. you've worked with. Dick oh. Van Patten, are you there this early hour? Yes, I'm here. I'm wearing a pink shirt, Jerry. <laughs> a what? A pink shirt. That's his thing. Oh. I always loved him in a pink shirt. Hiya, Dick. That's right. I, you remember when I tested for you and you, I wore the pink shirt? You said the reason you picked me for the poll is because I had a pink shirt on. Right. Oh, I'm doing this show, Mike Hammer. Mike uh, Hammer, good. That's a good show. If Terry Paris is directing it, he probably would have let me off to go up to Boston. <laughs> well, we'd have a little fun anyway. I miss you, Dick. How's the family? Oh, they're real good. They're Nels, Jimmy, Vincent, and Pat all send their love. Yeah. They're yeah. great. The greatest kids and Pat. They're wonderful people and we're very close. We don't see enough of each other. Last time I was in beach. California, I had dinner with you guys. Remember, Dick? That's right. How's your dad? Oh, he's very good, thanks. Good. Well, give my love to Pat, will you? I certainly will. Thanks. You're great to call in this morning. How nice of you. Oh, what a wonderful man. Isn't How's your he? tennis? Oh, very good. How's your paddle tennis? Fine. I'm doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good I love luck. you. Good luck with my camera and thanks a lot, Dick. Okay. Bye, I miss Jerry. you. What? Bye-bye.
Don't go. Oh. Wait a uh, minute. I need some money to get a first class flight home. <laughs> You've got that. You're a dirty devil. We have Rosemary on the phone. Rosie, are you there now? Sure. Rosemary, good Rosie. morning. Rosie. Rosie, are you there? I'm here. There ah, she is. See, I got Very it. early. That's. <laughs> It's too early for her. This is terrible. Rosemary, what was what was it like working with Jerry back in the Dick Van Dyke Show days? Oh, well, we're on the air, aren't we? Yes, <laughs> live. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I don't think I could really tell that. <laughs> Did you just wake up, honey? No, I, I was awakened. You were awakened by our phone call. Of course. What then? Oh. I'm sorry, but you're due on the set. Your first scene is right now. You know me. I don't work before 10 o'clock. I know. I said, <laughs> listen to that. Listen to that voice. Isn't Are you that kidding? Great. Well, no, she gets higher in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary, uh, just a little bit earlier, Jerry said that when you all were doing that show together, that you really kind of held them together. Did they need a lot of holding together? I don't know whether I held them together. I'm kind of that kind of a person that kind of, kind of keeps everything. Uh, going so that everybody likes everybody and everybody keeps you know moving right along mm -hmm. but, you were a, uh, uh we were we were very we were a very unusual group we really were and we, uh, we loved one another and yeah. we sort of took care of one another you also whether you know it or not you were like to me you were like the cheerleader i mean whenever there was a problem with somebody else you got in there and broke it up and said, come on, gang, let's go. Come on, yeah, we well, can that, do it. That, I believe in that, especially when we're working, you know, because yeah. you need a happy, a yeah. happy frame of mind with everybody when you're working. Yeah. Well, Rosemary, we thank you for getting up early. And, uh, I'm sorry. That's it. I got to go back to bed now. I have to do <laughs> No, no. Get on a plane and come and see us. We, I'll, I'll take you to dinner this weekend if you're not doing anything. You know I'm never doing anything. <laughs> I'll call you when I get home. I'll be home Friday night. Did you just wake up, honey? No, I, well, I was awakened. You were awakened by our phone call? Of course. What then? Oh. I'm sorry, but you're due on the set. Your first scene is right now. You know me. Loop. I don't work before 10 o'clock. I know. I said, <laughs> listen to that. Listen to that voice. Isn't Are you kidding? Great? Well, no, she gets higher in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we were a very unusual group. We really were. And we, uh, we loved one another. And yeah. we sort of took care of one another. You also, whether you know it or not, you were like, to me, you were like the cheerleader. I mean, whenever there was a problem with somebody else, you got in there and broke it up and said, come on, gang, let's go. Come on, yeah, we well, can that, do it. That, I believe in that, especially when we're working, you know, because yeah. you need a happy, a yeah. happy frame of mind with everybody when you're working. Yeah. Well, Rosemary, we thank you for getting up early. And, uh, I'm sorry. That's it. I got to go back to bed now. I have to do uh, it. No, no. Get on a plane and come and see us. We, I'll, I'll take you to dinner this weekend if you're not doing anything. You know I'm never doing anything. <laughs> I'll call you when I get home. I'll be home Friday night. Jerry, 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 I got a date, but I'll break it. Oh, there's another lady on the phone that, that thanks the world and all of you. Shelly Winters, are you there this morning? Oh God. Shelly? I'm going to say, Terry, I'm having another baby. Come quick, take me to the hospital. <laughs> I didn't know true. you were going to talk first. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to try to guess who it was. Oh, are you kidding? How can I miss that voice? <laughs> Listen to that. If Shelly, what do you think thing. about when, uh, when somebody says Jerry Paris? What comes to mind? Oh, a best friend. Oh. Not many best friends are around these days. Yeah. And for many, many years, we were very, very close. Yeah, right. Right. And God, I miss you, Shelly. Can I come over for breakfast? <laughs> you absolutely come now. I can tell you my problems. You can tell me yours. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to fly back to California? Yeah. From Yep, yeah, I'm flying back Friday night. I'll be there Saturday. This is just a, kind of a nice show I had with Bob Stack about the Untouchables yesterday, and then they put me on because they didn't have anything to do today. <laughs> so, You're wrong. So Shelly, I wanted to, you were uh, going to come up, right? Yes, I can't. I'm, I'm teaching, and uh, I have a class uh, tonight and one tomorrow, and I'm working on a play a young writer wrote. Sort of a female hurly-burly. Yeah. You're always busy because you always care about the theater and love and, and also your audience. You care about doing things for people. You always did, Shelley. Well, I'm going to don't embarrass me, but I must say as I get older, I think one of the forms of immortality is maybe the most important is to pass on your life experience and knowledge to the next generation. Oh, what a right. great thing to say. Very good. Very good. Very good. You I know, love that you, Shelly. The, the baby that you took me to have at the hospital that time because her father was in Italy? Yes. <laughs> She's now in second year of medical school. 
Are you kidding? No. I got such a pain here. Could I see her? <laughs> if you come to That's... New York, you could. That little girl is a doctor? Yep, almost. What at, school? Where? NYU, and she's doing research at Rockefeller Institute. Oh, my God. I'm coming in for a checkup. I, I spent a lot of time in Harvard, she, uh, in Boston. She went to Harvard. Isn't that great? Shelly, come back up and see us. We had a great time with you I when really you were here. I really will. I just, this next couple of weeks are rough. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get you after that. Thank you, Shelly. Have Shelley. a good trip. And, Jerry, let's get together when I'm in California. I love you. I love you. Okay, Bye thank now. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hollywood, it's the Jerry Paris Variety Hi, Show starring Jerry Paris. Jerry's guests tonight are writer Jerry Paris, director Jerry Paris, producer Jerry Paris, and all-around nice guy, Mr. Congenial himself, Jerry Paris. Mr. Hoffman. Now, here he is, Jerry Paris. And that's us. <laughs> Look at this, I'm acting with him, Groucho Marx style. Here we go. <laughs> Gary, for Tom, for Ed, for all the executives. You know, when you go, I'll be top banana. Bitch, <laughs> the fine she's not played guessing games while chewing. You remember the girl with the motorcycle, all dressed in pink? Pinky put, pinky puts. <laughs> Joni, go upstairs and study. Or you can forget about Friday night and jo Jenny Piccolo's... <laughs> well, don't worry. they will do better next year. Are you kidding? Last year... Wait, hold it. What is the line? <laughs> <laughs> what is the line? Say pickup. Action. Hey, Richard. The fines is not... <laughs> story about walnuts. Oh, well, walnuts it, was, it, it was like my third show on the Dick Van Dyke show. I stopped throwing up and I was more secure. And there was a science fiction Mary story. Would, we're looking at a late movie and she got frightened. And it was about absorbitrons he made up in the walnuts. <laughs> like a Twilight Zone, you know. <laughs> and so when he woke up in the morning, he watched and she wouldn't watch. She was very disturbed. They had twin beds then because they didn't allow a double bed in those days. Did you ah. know that? Yeah. You could never sleep with your wife or husband. Or something. <laughs> No, that's the truth. So then when they woke up in the morning, a lot of crazy things happened, like he found walnuts all over the floor when he was walking to the kitchen. And in the kitchen, she was saying, do you want sunny side up or scrambled? And she broke walnuts in the pan. <laughs> yes. And then when he went to the office, there was walnuts all over, and Rosemary was typing and said, oh, a walnut in the typewriter. He said, you're kidding me, you guys. There's all the, I just saw this show. There's no absorbitrons, because they say that you lose your thumbs and that you can't type. <laughs> oh. Oh my God! And Danny Thomas walked in, and he was supposed to be the man from the science fiction place, and he's supposed to have four eyes. And he he talked to him, and he went out. And as he went out, he said to Dick Van Dyke, who was behind him, out of the office, he said, "You have a spot on your tie." He said, "How do you know?" He said, "Because I have 20, 20, 20, 20 vision." <laughs> walked out, you see. And then all these things happened, but there was no ending to it. So I, he ran home without his thumbs. Laura, Laura, what happened? And then it goes into an oil dissolve, we call it, and it's a dream. But I didn't want to do that. So I called the walnut company, called the Diamond Walnut Company. <laughs> oh, sure. And they sure. gave me 1,100 pounds of walnuts <laughs> to fill the closet. 
Do you remember the closet? <laughs> yeah. And so Dick was scared. I said, Dick, when you open the closet, be careful. I don't know if it'll work and I'll get fired. But we had 500 people in the audience and he opened it and a waterfall of walnuts came out. Jerry Milo, our lighting director, a second ago I walked off and he said, Eileen, do you know what Jerry Paris is sitting there doing? You have to tell everybody. You're directing the show as you sit here. You were doing it with Bob Stack. Give me a cover sorry. shot. Let me have a shot. Where's a close-up? Where's a... <laughs> it's time to applaud. There it is. Yeah, Hard to let it go. No, it's a wonderful surprise just hearing Shelley Winters and oh, Maury gosh. Amsterdam. It was really very nice, and yeah. I, I would like to come back because I, I love to... I love to see your trees. It's a I love given. to hurry and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, Boston and Thank New you, England. Jerry. And we love you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all of you for being here.